All right, so I, I believe this is actually episode 16. Is it? I think so. I'm pretty sure. Did Dougie Doug get it right? I think, but I can't. I can't remember. It's okay. it's one of them. It's one of them, guys. But it, we think it's number sixteen. In any case, we got a good show here lined up for you. We're going to be talking a little bit about the upcoming Twin City Wrestling show, which has, of course, as you heard on this last uh, last little bit, has had a venue change since the last time we spoke yes. to you. And we're also going to be previewing tomorrow night's Night of Champions pay per view. For WWE, should be a good one. I think it's I think it's lined up to be a really good show. But we'll start with the with the Twin City Wrestling news. So, as we mentioned on the last show, uh, Twin City Wrestling had a show lined up for Lunenburg, Lunenburg Community Center, right? And that, that was nobody seems to know where it is. <laughs> it's true. You drive into Lunenburg, you're like. Where the hell am I, and uh, why are there so many one-way streets? It's true. And why who are you getting into my car? <laughs> oh, I just need a, I just need a lift down to the end of the street there. Yeah. All right. This is a very friendly place. <laughs> okay. Um, so originally, yes, that was lined up for a Lunenburg show on the 28th. Now, unfortunately, uh, the Lunenburg Community Center, which apparently must be this hot buzz like real happening place in Lunenburg, I guess double booked that night. I guess. So seniors need their dart night. Seniors need their dart night, apparently. Uh or the the sixty plus stripper practice night or something Ooh. like that. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> so basically the Twin City Wrestling Show had to find a new home. So it has moved from Lunenburg almost an hour away from its original venue. Now it's in Liverpool. Coming down to my territory. Exactly. That's where Nick Stepping lives. Stepping on my porch. Nick runs this shit. Yeah. I just slapped him in the left titty. You did. Yeah. Yeah. You love it, you slut. Got firm now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so they're going down to Lun- uh, to Lun- Lunenburg. Liverpool. Liverpool, Liverpool. Liverpool Fire Hall, isn't it? Fire Hall, yeah. Right on Main Street. Right on Main Street. Very, very easy to find. Uh, base. It's going to be bringing the exact same card. And we, in fact, have a Last Fan Standing podcast exclusive about the show. Do we do it? Dun dun dun. <laughs> so, as we mentioned last time, the main event is the same. Sexton Phoenix gets a rematch, gets another shot at Dazzling Dick Durning's TCW Heavyweight Championship. Yes, sir. However, what you don't know and what was only rumored up until this point, we can now officially confirm, and we are the only source that can do this, the R&R Express, who has been conspicuous by their absence from the last few shows, are going to be in Liverpool to explain why they were absent from those previous shows. And they may very well have to answer to the boss. Because the boss was not happy that the r r Express, the tag team champions, were not in-house for the previous two shows. He was not a happy camper. Hmm. So, the r r Express is guaranteed to be in Liverpool to answer the question as to why they were not present for the last two shows. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. It's not exactly a huge exclusive. Well, maybe but, you the know, truck broke down. Maybe the truck broke maybe down. Maybe they ran out of beer. You know, those are two valid excuses it why is. you should miss a show. And when they're not drunk, they might not be able to find their way to the arena. There you go. <laughs> Problem solved. Exactly. I solved it. Nick solved it. Nick answered the mystery. <laughs> Nobody has to go to the show anymore. Nick answered the mystery. No. No, go uh, to the show. Please go to the show. Uh, Twin City Wrestling is such a great product. Like, we can't talk about it enough. Uh, it's it's just a really good product. Of course, Nick works for them. All the, all the fuck-ups on the music are directly his fault. Yeah, that's my fault. And and you'll typically hear me stand up and go, Attaboy, Stevenson! <laughs> or something of that nature. Yeah. Because... Nick is Nick is very over with the crowd. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I'm hip. I'm waiting. We're waiting for Nick uh, Stevenson's Nick Stevenson's inevitable heel turn. <laughs> <laughs> we just yell at everybody. Exactly. <laughs> Fuck you! I'm not playing your music. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. No. Um. But yes. Yeah, uh. So. Twin City Wrestling, Liverpool Fire Hall, Saturday, September 28th. It's a Saturday night show. I know you guys love to go out and get drunk Saturday night. You can go out and get drunk after the show. The show should be done by like 10. 
So you still have plenty of time to go out. Although I don't know where you go out and get drunk in Liverpool. I'm um, sure there's a couple of bars. Yeah, there's the privateer. And, the privateer. And there's one more down yeah. by the bowling alley. Nice. Oh it's, yeah. As a matter of fact, it's in the bowling alley. No. Uh, so it, there. It kind of is. It's in the basement. Oh my god. Jesus I believe. Christ. Underneath the Frenchies. Gotta love, <laughs> gotta, gotta love Nova Scotia. So there you go. Come to the Twin City Wrestling Show. If you're in Liverpool, come to that show. We'll we'll all go to privateers after the show. We'll all get fucking hey, blitzed, that's... and we're staying the night at Nick's. House. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever it takes. All right, folks. Here's the main event: WWE Night of Champions. It goes down tomorrow night. Tomorrow yeah, let's go down night. Tomorrow. Tomorrow night. Exactly. Uh, and we I'll got, be working. You'll be working. Oh, yeah. I, I don't even know if. Well, no, I should be home. So I should be home, which means I will stream it for free because I'm in Canada. That's right. <laughs> but it is going to be an excellent show. And if you're in the States and you have better morals than we do, you should absolutely buy it. Mm. <laughs> but only if you have better morals than we do. So, Night of Champions, we're going to take a look at the officially announced card for now. Uh, we're going to start, we might as well start with the kickoff show, I guess. Oh, okay. Because this is actually a big match to be put on a kickoff show. You think? It kind of, well, just big in size, like okay. just the size of the match, okay. right? Okay, yeah. Uh, so the Night of Champions kickoff show is going to begin with a tag team turmoil match, which we haven't seen in WWE in a little while. Uh, so what this is, is a tag team turmoil match, two teams start. When one team is eliminated, then another team comes down. Kind of like the Royal Rumble. Okay. So it's a tag team turmoil match for a number one contendership match for, or not not number one contendership match, for the number one contendership for the WWE tag team titles. Yeah. To later then face the Shield, Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns later on in the night. So the teams that are involved in this Night of Champions kickoff uh, tag team turmoil match number one contendership, we're looking at the primetime players, Darren Young and Titus O'Neil. Tons of Funk, who apparently are still employed with this company. Why? Br- Brodus Clay and Tensai. See, I don't even, I don't dislike them. Well, we'll talk about it in a second. Uh, the Usos, Jimmy and Jay Uso. Uh, possibly. The Real Americans, Jack Swagger and Antonio Cesaro, of course, accompanied by Zeb Coulter. Of course. And any two members of 3MB, because there's three people in the group, right? So any two members of 3MB. So a combination of two between Heath Slater, Drew McIntyre, and Jinder Mahal. So let's let's get a couple things out of the way quick. First of all, which two of 3MB do you think it's going to be? Which two? Yeah. Uh, Ginger Mahal and Heath Slater. <laughs> you just call him Ginger? <laughs> Ginger Mahal, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yes. Nice. I did. You th- you said it, that it was going to be uh, Ginger and Heath? Yeah. <laughs> uh, see, I think I think it's actually going to be... Well, I, I have to pick the two of the three of them that I actually like the best. Uh, so I actually think I would like to see it be Heath and Drew McIntyre. We know it's going to be Heath. Oh, yeah. Like, Heath's the yeah. fucking leader of that group. De of facto, course. he's the leader of the group. So it's going to be Heath. Um, but I'd like to see it be Heath and Drew McIntyre, because I'd actually like to see, you know, maybe Drew McIntyre get spotlighted a little bit again, since he's actually a good talent. But in any Possibly. case, I'd like to see Heath and Drew. So you think it's going to be Heath and G- G- Ginger, apparently. <laughs> Ginger, yeah. Um, all right. So so there's uh, there's 3MB at the very least. Yep. Um, yeah. Tons of funk. I like tons of funk. I think they're like a fun loving kind of almost like a Rikishi sort of thing. They are, but I don't know. They're the a draw the for the kids. Gets, like they, they are. Yeah. That's that's basically what it is. They're like an overweight John Cena. <laughs> <laughs> and it's two well, one extremely overweight John Cena and the other <laughs> not quite as bad. Um yeah. For sure, and like they 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 have their place as kind of entertaining. I don't think they're any threat in this match at all. Like, oh god, no! I really like if fucking tons of funk wins this match. God damn! Yeah, like the shield is just gonna destroy them, right? So, you know, I, I can't see this being a big jump here for tons of funk. Oh god, no! And I don't see three MB winning it either. I think they're 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 the jokey entries in in this match. So that really leaves us with either the primetime players, the Usos, or the Real Americans. 
<sighs> now here's the thing. Mm-hmm. Primetime players, they one of them got talent and the other one don't. Mm. Let, let's put let's put it that way. Absolutely, and this is this is going to be a very unpopular thing to say, and I apologize ahead of time for saying it because I know people are going to take it the wrong way. Would the prime time players be on pay per view, even on a kickoff show, if Darren Young wouldn't have come out as being gay? Yeah. You know, like, yeah, I don't think like the primetime players are getting TV time on Raw weekly. Right. And they were doing nothing before Darren Young came out as gay. And now all of a sudden Darren Young comes out as gay and now the primetime players are getting television time and they're getting a pay-per-view spot. Now, I mean, in a match like this, WWE only has five tag teams. Oh, sure. So, yeah. So maybe they, they, they would have, have been to. in this match anyway. Yeah, of course. Or maybe it only would have been four teams. But what? But like again, it's gonna. It's an unpopular thing to say, and I and I'm not saying like. I'm not saying Darren Young like that. Like it was bad that he came out, but I'm just saying, like I'm not saying, but I'm saying the only reason that mm. they're getting TV time and getting time on a pay per view and possibly winning this match. Because there's a possibility. There, there is a good possibility that they I will could go agree over with you for, with that. That they could win this match, and yeah. I don't think any of that exists if Darren Young didn't come out as gay. So we'll we'll get off that topic okay. because it's, it's the more I talk, it's just going to anger people okay. more. Moving on, yeah. uh, l- let's, yes, please. <laughs> let's let's go to the real American. The real Americans. All right. Okay. When they started. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were talking about oh we're, we're the real Americans we're going to uh, squash everybody that's mm-hmm. not American right and they basically got their asses handed to them consistently consistently by they still do everybody like did did correct me if I'm wrong but did Antonio Cesaro not job to Santino Morella on Raw I believe so I think because I think that was I think that was Cesaro. Which, fuck me dead. Like, yeah. I, I got nothing. I got no issue with Santino at all. I think Santino's funny. Mm. But, like, you come out and say, oh, we're going to we're gonna squash everybody that's not American. And then fucking Santino beats you? Yeah. That, that, <laughs> that's saying something there. Yikes. So, I, I can see possibly they're, they're, them winning. Really? Uh, yeah, because you know they started out and and uh, they had kind of like a bad run. Right, started from the bottom. Now they're here. Yeah, yeah. All right, fair. So they kind of transitioned themselves. Mm-hmm. I mean, kind of in a way. Right. So yeah, I could see it. Why not? Uh, why not put the tag team belts possibly on them? Maybe. You know, to try to play up the these are mm-hmm. the. United States tag team belts, and, and you know that are, that would be kind of cool if they actually we are turned around. American, then yeah, you know, kind of play it off like that. Would be kind of cool if they kind of turned around and took the belts and is like these are no longer the WWE World Tag Team Championships, and they come out with like a pair of like the old U.S. title that had like the U.S. all over it. Yeah, like maybe the spinner version or something stupid <laughs> like that. Old rejects at WWE Shop dot com has in a back storage room somewhere, and be like these are the United States Tag Team Championship or something like that. Uh, yeah, I could see that. Um, I think of the three teams we have left, they're probably third on my thoughts for them actually actually winning the match and going up against the Shield because the only reason I say that is they're both heel tag teams, right? Yeah. Although the Shield is really fucking over with the crowd. So they are. it's hard to call them heels. Oh, God. Even yes. though they are, but it's hard to call them heels because the crowd's like, fucking Shield! <laughs> Can love it. Sierra Hotel, yeah! <laughs> right? Yeah. So, so you know, it's it, it, it's hard to say that. But I think, I think they're probably... I would put them third behind primetime players in the Usos. Okay. I think 
the team of the five that deserves to win it and deserves to get another shot, deserves to get pay-per-view time to get that shot of the tag team titles is the Usos. I definitely agree with you, and that's why I saved them for last. Yeah, I think I think out of the five teams there, they're the best ones. Could we possibly see the debut of Los Matadores? The Matadors. Possibly. What are you looking at, sir? You looking I, right I was scary. being dramatic for the oh, camera. Oh, 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 oh. I had oh, my oh. puzzled face on. <laughs> es possible. Everybody that's watching on the Ustream or watching it after the fact gets to enjoy Nick's mysterious sexy face. Ooh. Oh. Anyways. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So okay. So that, so that's cool. So we're we're in agreement then that we think of the five teams, probably the one that deserves it is the Usos. Correct. Yes. Right. Fair enough. Um, that being said, who do we pick to actually, in reality, win the match? In reality, mm-hmm. well, it's not going to be three MB. No, we can eliminate. They're 3MB. a squash team. It, absolutely. It's not going to be tons of funk. No. Because come on. But I could see. 3M, I could see this match starting with tons of funk and 3MB. Oh, of course. And I could see 3MB eliminating tons of funk. Yes. Like cheater tactics, like Ginger or something, <laughs> if he's not in the match. It's just like, hey, Brodus, look at me, look at me, I'm Muslim. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, uh, and and like Heath getting like a roll up or something on on Tensai or something like that yeah. and actually eliminating like if if they're really going to fucking bury tons of funk oh yes unless they decide to turn them he- or until they decide to turn them heel um so that that's so that could happen but yeah 3MB we can just totally whatever yeah whatever and um let's see primetime players uh no no I'm going to have to go with the Usos. You're going to go with the Usos? Yeah. Jimmy and Jay. So Nick is officially predicting the Usos to win the match. I am actually going to go a different way. And I'm going to go with the primetime players. Are it's you? not that I think they deserve it over the Usos because we, we just said we we don't think that's the case. But I think if you're looking at the teams that are the like the team that's the hottest right now, yeah, it's the prime time players. They're the ones that are getting the TV time. They're the ones that are doing everything. So unfortunately, I have to go. I guess I'll go. I'll go prime time players. But I wouldn't be surprised if the Usos won. Okay. Because if you watched SmackDown last night, um. As the Shield was doing like a three-on-one beatdown on Dolph Ziggler or whatever, the Usos ran down. Right. So they were the ones that ran down to make the save. It wasn't the primetime players. So that could be a bit of a nod that like, yeah, the Usos, the Usos are going to win the match. So I'm going to go with the primetime players, but I wouldn't be surprised to see the Usos win. Fair enough. Right on. All right. Let us move to. Okay. Well, here. Let's look at it this way. Let's stick with this tag team turmoil thing. Okay. Then. Going to, oh, I knocked my microphone off. Sorry. Uh, then going later in the night to fight the shield. Yes. So whoever wins the match, do we give them any chance of taking the belts? If it's the Usos, uh-huh. then possibly. Okay. But if it's primetime players, I'm going to say no. You're going to say no, yeah. Um, and, and that's and that's kind of the way I feel about it, too. Like, if there was a team in in WWE right now that was going to take the belts off the shield, it would be the Usos. Mm-hmm. The Usos are the only ones that I would be like, okay, I'm okay with that because they deserve it. Yes. Right? Because, like, I... <sighs> The primetime players, like we, like like you said earlier, it's it's a team where like one guy's the one guy's got talent and the other guy really just you know is not the greatest, yeah. right? Like I look at I look at Titus O'Neil, Titus O'Neil, I could see being a like an over and a good singles competitor eventually. I don't see that in Darren Young. No. Right, I feel like when the primetime players' run is over, Darren Young is going to be the Marty Jannetty of that team. Like they're like he's the one that's not that's going to be kind of out in the cold with nothing to do. Mm. So that's kind of the way that I feel about it. So yeah, I, th- I think I think we're we're 
on the same page with that, that if the Usos win, there's a chance. If the primetime players win, or if anybody else wins, no. You know what they say, broken minds think alike. Exactly. It's not great minds, it's broken minds. (laughs) Uh, Let's go to the United States Championship match. Dean Ambrose from the Shield, so kind of sticking with the Shield theme. Going up against Dolph Ziggler. Now, this was set up because of Dolph's uh, run-ins with the Shield in the last little while, and the fact that he technically beat Dean Ambrose on SmackDown last night by disqualification. He did. So, by virtue of the fact that he beat him by disqualification when the Shield ran in, Vicky Guerrero granted him a United States Championship match. Um, I'm very excited for this match. Uh, I actually really hope, I really hope we don't see, we don't see the Shield interfere in this match at all because these are two guys that I would like to see go on pay per view. One hundred percent. Right. I mean. Dolph Ziggler versus Dean Ambrose. It's a great match. It, it's a, it's more than a great match. Exactly. It's one of those matches that like, you could put that on a WrestleMania card oh, and for sure. give them like twenty to twenty five minutes and just let them Hell, go. Give them an hour. Give them an hour. Iron. That's it. We're calling it WrestleMania thirty Iron Man <laughs> match. Dolph Ziggler versus Dean Ambrose. Why? Why the fuck not? It would be epic. It would be fucking great. Um, and, and I don't think we will see the shield interfere in the match for the simple reason that at, at pay-per-views over the last little while, like if they both have a match, like Mm -hmm. if there's a tag team match for the tag titles and Ambrose has a match, like they'll start coming down the audience together, but eventually like whoever's in the match will like turn around and fist bump the other, the other ones. And then they'll walk down and the other two will leave. Okay. So I'm kind of hoping that that's what happens and we don't have any kind of interference or anything like that. However, when it comes to Dolph Ziggler, there's still this Biggie Langston thing that's kind of hovering there, kind of unsettled. It, it's kind of there, but not really. But not, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of there, but not really. But it's like, it's one of those things that you could see maybe popping back up on pay-per-view, like... Langston comes down and screws Dolph Ziggler out of win- out of winning the US title. Yeah. And then maybe like let's say this match happens, let's say that's the first match on the card. Dean Ambrose and Dolph Ziggler. Let's say Biggie Langston interferes in the match or distracts Dolph or whatever and he loses. Yeah. Dolph goes back in a huff, goes to Vicky Guerrero or goes to Brad Maddox or whoever and he's like I want to match with Biggie Langston. Like that could be the kind of thing where maybe Dolph does double duty and then has a match with Biggie Langston even though it's not a title match. Quite to kind of end that feud. Like just cuz it's kind of hanging there in limbo. Yeah. Like tie off the loose end and end the feud completely. Or maybe the feud's already been ended. Like, I mean, I, I don't, I didn't see where it was like, yeah, okay, this feud is done. Maybe they ended it in a in a house show, like when Taker came back. They could have. They could very well have done that. That's a possibility. Speaking of Taker, they name dropped Taker on SmackDown last night. Did they? Yes, during the uh, the stuff that was going on with the Shield uh, when it turned into a six man tag match. I missed that. Uh. I think it was just kind of a throwaway line by JBL. He was like, uh, uh, you know, the Undertaker ran into the Shield, and we haven't seen him since. Do you think maybe that's a little nod that maybe sooner or later, maybe Undertaker comes back to kind of, I got unfinished business with this Shield uh, group, and maybe he comes back? Quite possibly. Maybe, just for a short-term run, obviously. For a short-term but... run, because, I mean, he has to rest up for WrestleMania. Exactly, for sure. Um so maybe that might be a possibility. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to put money on that, but that might. It's a possibility at the very least. I could put money on it. Apparently, I got five bucks. Yeah, there's a distinct possibility that you have five dollars. <laughs> um, so we're kind of done with that. Um, Ambrose, Ambrose versus Ziggler. Do you see? Do you see much value in them giving Ziggler the title right now, or do you think it's better served? Staying on Ambrose. It's, That's my long-winded way of asking you who I think you got, is going to win. <laughs> it's better, better put keeping on Ambrose. I think I agree. And I don't know why Ziggler doesn't need the belt. No, Zig- Ziggler doesn't need a secondary title, right? Like yeah. Ziggler needs a world title. Ziggler needs to be in. Like Ziggler needs to go back 
to go right immediately back into a fucking feud with Alberto Del Rio over the world title because that is unfinished. Well, that that's the thing. I I definitely think that they should, but ever since like for a couple weeks now, they've right. been doing jack shit. Excuse my French. Right with Ziggler. It's true. Ziggler's like been kind of loosely involved in this whole uh, Triple H power trip thing, but not really. Certainly not as deeply involved as the Big Show is. Yeah. Um, but like Ziggler was another one of those guys that's like standing at the top of the ramp, and he's like, "I want to go down there and help Daniel Bryan, but I fear for my job." Yeah. But that's really all that they've been doing with him. Like since he lost the world title to Del Rio. Um, he had that feud with Biggie Langston, which, okay, yeah. I get it, um, which is, again, was kind of left unfinished, like we said, and then he's kind of been involved in this, and then he's kind of sort of been involved with the shield. It's like, that's, that's what this is. Oh. This is like the culmination of a kind of sort of angle. Yeah. Right? Like, it's kind of sort of there, but not really. So it's, it's hard to tell, um, exactly where this is, where it's going to go. Uh, but, uh, I think we personally there, we just kind of hashed it out that we would rather see him immediately go back into a feud with Alberto Del Rio. Oh, most definitely. Because we're going to talk about this Del Rio and Van Dam match for the World Heavyweight title. And I just, as a precursor to that, I don't see Van Dam in that spot. God, no. I would rather see Van Dam. I would rather see those two be reversed. I would rather see Van Dam being the one challenging for the U.S. title. Because I would see value in that for yeah. Van Dam. Van Dam would and make a perfect U.S. champ. Exactly, and Del Rio being, or not Del Rio, Ziggler being the one in the World Heavyweight match with Del Rio. Yeah. But anyways, we'll get to that. Uh, we got a fatal four way match on this card, which is cool, yes. except for the fact that it's divas. But that's well, okay. That's, I, mean, I think it's. It's, I think it's actually not going to be too bad. You need an extra long bathroom break sometime. It's true. I'm going to take such a wicked long piss during this match. <laughs> it's going to be fucking great. It, it, it's a fatal four-way, so you have enough time to maybe pop co- popcorn, too. It's true. I It'd could be I like could a whole order four minutes. Yeah, and and I could I could like I could order a pizza and it could be delivered in that amount of time. <laughs> <laughs> fatal four-way match. WWE Divas Championship, AJ Lee versus Natalia versus Brie Bella versus, for some fucking reason, fucking Naomi. Why the fuck is Naomi in this match? It's like, well, she's on Total Divas. So? Yeah. Can she wrestle? Can either of them really wrestle? One is okay. She can that throw might the be her. pom-poms. She can throw the pom-poms and throw her gigantic ass in the way. <laughs> because that's one of her moves they're fucking yeah, bum I rush know. and it's just like that's a fucking wrestling move now and i understand i get it that rikishi it, did a fucking yeah, stink face but still his ass was part of his gimmick <laughs> yeah like naomi's ass is not really part of her gimmick as far as i can tell uh, <laughs> all right so we got aj uh, lee natalia brie bella and naomi hmm. um AJ Lee, I loved that. F- we we talked about it on the last last the fan promo. standing. I loved that fucking promo. That mm-hmm. promo was so good. Like I I've watched it at least another ten times since then. It's fucking good. Yeah. Um, because and it, and it's good because it's one of those things in wrestling. The best things usually come out when it's kind of heartfelt. You know what I mean? Like when there's actually some truth behind it. Right. Like this whole this whole thing that we'll get into when we start talking about Randy Orton and Daniel Bryan. Um, but like when Edge was back this week, like the couple of promos that Edge cut mm. were very, very good. Almost like definitely. when they were talking about like, oh, you know, it's just like like Edge, you always kind of underperformed or whatever. And he's like, uh, I didn't, I was, I wasn't handed this Hall of Fame ring. I earned it, and all this stuff is very good promos, right? And it's and it's all it, it's all better when there's a little bit of heart felt to it. Yeah. Um, but and now in terms of AJ Lee, Natalia, Brie Bella, and Naomi, um, head and shoulders the best wrestler in this match is Naomi. No. <laughs> oh my <It's>... god. <laughs> <laughs> head and shoulders, the best wrestler in this match is Naomi. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh... Freudian slip there. <laughs> nice ass. Um <laughs> 
I meant to say Natalia. There you go. Thank you. I don't know why the fuck I said Naomi. That's that's just horrible. <laughs> and we lost all of our listeners right there. <laughs> Head and shoulders, the best wrestler in this match is the fucking black chick that doesn't wrestle very good. Oh, God. No. No. Uh, Natalia, for sure, is yes. the best wrestler in this match. AJ Lee is getting better. She is. Every single match, she gets better. And you can tell, like, she's she's learning. She's just, like, she's learning by osmosis. She's just soaking up everything that she can in terms of actual wrestling knowledge. And I think when their careers are all said and done, I think AJ Lee will have had the more impressive career. Mm-hmm. But do we see, like, AJ, who's kind of playing this anti-diva thing but not really – do we see her holding on to the belt or do we see one of the girls from Total Divas win the title? What I'm thinking right now mm-hmm. is about Naomi's gigantic ass. Oh, buddy, you don't even know. <laughs> you don't even know. <laughs> no, but uh, <laughs> damn it, why did you make me start thinking about it? <laughs> <laughs> it's hypnotic. It's like a lava lamp. Um, <laughs> sorry. No, but AJ Lee is on fire right now with the promo. For sure. So why would you take away the belt from her? If, if, if she's coming out almost every single night, like when the Divas mm-hmm. have a match, she's either cutting a promo, sitting on the, uh, sitting at the announcer table with the mic on. Right. Just, you know, just, pumping out lines because she talks and she talks so good yeah she's the best promo in that whole division i mean why why take it away from her it's a good it's a good it's a good question like what what do you do with her if she's not if she doesn't have the title yeah or she's not challenging for the title right on um i just threw a bottle cap out the door sorry folks um yeah if she's if she doesn't have the title or she's not like immediately challenging for the title what do you do with her you send her back into that program that is just like is she fucking biggie langston or is she not fucking biggie langston yeah. and and does anybody care about that at this point like not that's really. like her 10th boyfriend or something and it's just like we don't really want to see this angle again now it's it's cool now seeing her being like almost like a trish stratus or alita kind of character yeah. where it's just like I'm the best wrestler in this division and nobody can tell me otherwise and, and everything like that. And so we both seem to be really enjoying it. So I think are we're both on AJ to keep the title here. I think we are. Uh, I would expect to see some twin magic. Well, although, yes. although isn't, isn't, is Nikki still injured? Cause one of them like hurt their arm fairly severely. So Nikki might still be injured. She might be. So if, if she's still injured, then no twin magic happening there. Um, but, I mean, Naomi, we fucking know Naomi's not winning the title. Oh, God, no. If Naomi wins the title, I'll turn off the pay-per-view. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'm going to put that I'm right on fucking Front Street right now. If Naomi wins the fucking title, I won't watch the rest of the pay-per-view. Main event, CM Punk's match, nothing. I will not I will not finish it because it's just like, I don't dislike her. She's just not a fucking wrestler. Yeah. Like, she's just, it'd be like fucking Oksana winning the Divas title. It's like, she can't fucking wrestle. So, why? Why, yeah. So, we don't think Naomi's going to win it. Brie Bella, probably not. Like, I mean, the Bellas are like the focal point of that Total Divas show. So, they have other things that they can do. Oh, yes. I don't think one of them needs to have the belt unless you're going to do like a sister versus sister because I don't think there's ever been in the history of WWE, I don't think there's ever been a sister versus sister match for a title. Well, certainly not for a title. Oh, God, no. But even a sister versus sister match I don't think has ever happened. Hmm. So really it comes down to whether Natalia is going to beat AJ Lee for the title. And while I think Natalia is going to look good and she's going to make AJ look really good Mm -hmm. and the times that they're together are going to be the highlight of that match. I think AJ finds a way and probably hangs on to the belt. So we'll Nicely stick with put. that. Nicely put. Bam. So we'll hold on to AJ Lee retaining the Divas title. So far, we do not have any title changes. 